having an Encuentro Fandanguero del Pacific Northwest. And this event is intended as the reflective practice of the Fandango Son Jarocho movement, um, which is a transnational movement. We have Antonio Garcia de Leon, Cesar Castro, Carolina Sarmiento, and Andres Flores here. And we've had epic dialogue today. An Encuentro is, is a, 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 a gathering of sorts uh, with a purpose. The reason why we're here today, you know, is, is very Zapatista in nature and the, and the way that we're doing things. And one of the, one of the ideas that they um, <clears throat> put forth that I, I really gravitated towards and, and, and have, have sort of utilized in different spaces is this idea of uh, consensus through participatory democracy and not just you know this idea that that one has a um, a, a, a right to vote or a right to participate but more of a responsibility. The Fandango movement has grown so much that it doesn't always grow in the way that you would like it to grow or sometimes we have all these kind of like weird branches that are growing in different directions and I think Seattle's doing an amazing job of being very concerned in reproducing the values of community, the values of the fandango, um, the values of humility that are so important for, for the fandango to be, to take a good human shape. We all have played together in fandangos um, and are, are, have been committed to that, to that um, way of life, uh, but it's not often that we all get to sit in a room and, and you know, shoot off ideas and, and uh, concepts about you know, why and how it is that we do these things. And so uh, I think we were able to share a lot with each other this time around uh, and you know even Cesar who I see all the time and spend time with him we have you know great conversations you know I heard him say some things today that I, I've never really heard him say it, you know, or, or contextualize things in a way I haven't heard him say, say them. Por todo lo que hemos escuchado debemos entender que ya hay varias décadas de comercialización del son en una si se estaba llevando entre las patas el fandango Después toda esta discusión que habla sobre lo que se le llamó después movimiento jaranero que enfocaba mucho su trabajo en, en la onda de, del campesino inspirado, entonces ahí salgo yo y tanto tú también ¿no? con, con, este, con este nuevo resurgimiento. Y el son se siguió, de hecho Mono Blanco es un grupo comercial, ¿no? o sea, pero ya uso términos de economía que he aprendido como adulto, digo, somos como empresas este, lucrativas socialmente responsables, ¿no? <risa> Porque entonces, sí, si me invitan a tocar y les cobro una buena lana, pues eso no tiene nada que ver con el fandango. Pero ese dinero, yo agarro y de ahí saco un pedazo para hacer lo que, lo que mi conciencia social, cultural me hace y, y, y pues yo decido cuánto le jalo, nomás de voluntario, ¿no? Pues dicen, haces trabajo voluntario. Y yo, mmm, chachos. <risa> The fandango is largely based on uh, uh, pieces of resonating wood and and then a, a resonating chamber within your within your body as you sing these verses. A wood in an instrument has to blend in order to create the masterpiece that you're looking for and everything affects directly to the sound, the final sound of it. For example, for the, for the body, for the main structure, we need a wood that is not that hard, it's not soft. We need something in the middle. For the top, we need something softer that's gonna allow the instrument to breathe and sweat, <laughs> a lot of music. And then there's these accessories that they need to support everything that's gonna happen on top of those two. And they are hard, hard woods. And it relates directly in a poetic form to a community. You need every single place.
there's um, some of the best maestros. I think Andres Flores is one of the best maestros in Son Jarocho. Um, I think he, he's really kind of developing a, a new way of, of teaching and it's a, in a way that's really kind of integrating the different pieces that have been for so long, like separated the, the dance from the song to you know the versos and he's kind of reintegrating everything. And I mean, everybody here is, is a maestro or a maestra. Están aprendiendo mal porque no hay mucha gente que enseñe realmente lo que es el fandango. Hay gente que te enseña a tocar un instrumento, pero no te dicen todo lo que están haciendo ustedes. ¿no? Pues es muy diferente que aprendas a tocar un instrumento de, del son jarocho a que aprendas con lo que es el, el, la comunidad o lo que, lo que es un fandango realmente. ¿no? Es, o los grupos de escenario, ¿no? que es, no es... Pues yo sí lo hago porque es parte de, de lo que... De mi, de mi trabajo, ¿no? Un grupo, ¿no? Pero para mí es más importante un fandango, ¿no? Lo que, todo lo que engloba un fandango. Sí, yeah, we learn from each other. ¿no? During the Zapatismo, we were involved, and, and so how to be involved in, in different movement, movements. Even before, when Antonio yesterday he was talking about how Song Jarocho was uh, part of, of of how people would would criticize other things in other times. It's like it's there. It's we cannot just be doing Song Jarocho for ent entertainment. And like we're not joking around. But the movement, it is very political. And for example, to me, during the 90s, it was first the music, but then what, what made me, as a teenager, and what made me feel even stronger about it, is when I found, that, found out that, that by playing Son Jarocho, I was going against the, 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 the current. <laughs> It's hard to understand for some of my friends because no one, none, I mean, few of them would play this music, but most of them would make fun of, the, of it, and they would make fun of me. Like, what do you like that musica de viejitos? No, like old people's music. I was like, oh, it's, it's good music, and and it, it is us, and it's hard to understand when you say that. Like, what do you mean it's us? No, it's that. <laughs> Weird. And, and it's hard to explain. No, no hacer grupos, les decía hace rato. No es importante hacer grupos, es importante hacer comunidad, hacer fandangos e integrar a la gente. Eso es lo más importante, la integración. Y no debe haber tampoco... Eh, se da mucho lo de, yo digo, estrellitis, de que ya sé tocar bien y ya no participo o ya no integro a la gente. ¿no? O, o como sé tocar más que los demás, pues a ver cómo, cómo le hacen, ¿no? Y, ¿no? Si yo sé bailar más que, que otra persona, la llevo a la tarima y, le, y en la tarima, si, ella no, si esa persona no sabe, le enseño lo más básico, pero para que ella pueda, esa persona pueda participar, ¿no? No, hay, no debe haber exhibicionismo, eso no. Todo, todo, todo el diálogo estuvo súper intenso, súper interesante, ¿no? Todo. Había muchas cosas que, que yo las sé pra, por práctica, ¿no? No, no teóricamente, ¿no? Y, y un, un gran logro o un gran, más bien un gran acierto que, que pudieron hacer es haber traído a, a mi maestro Antonio García Lima, ¿no? Bueno, yo creo que la, el, la participación de las nuevas generaciones es principalmente porque están encontrando en el, la música, en el son y en la participación, están encontrando un poco como un sentido también para hacer crecer, este, digamos, eh, para practicar la música también, porque hay mucho interés, los jóvenes, mucho interés en las fusiones musicales, en la música, en lo que se escucha por eh, diferentes medios, ¿verdad? Y, y es tratar de, de intervenir un poco con con algo que es tradicional, pero al mismo tiempo hacer una serie de cambios, 
Y en ese sentido, por ejemplo, en México hay cantidad de grupos que están buscando vinculaciones con otras músicas, ¿no? incluyendo músicas de África o de Estados Unidos o de Cuba o de diferentes regiones. ¿no? A Antonio García no lo conozco ca casi desde que empecé, como los cuatro años de que empecé a tocar. Y Antonio fue una persona muy importante al comienzo de, de, de la historia que, que, que yo llevo del son, porque fue como un padrino, ¿no? También la palabra acaba... Bueno, yo he pensado ahora la palabra siquisidí. Y encontramos en Congo unas maracas que, para, me, que son de metal para, para acompañar cierta música y se llaman chiquitsiri en Congo. Y yo digo que bueno, pues a lo mejor la palabra siquisiri no se la inventaron en Veracruz. A lo mejor el chiquitsiri te tocaba con esas maracas, ¿no? Chiquitsiri, ¿no? O, o chiquitsiri quería decir, este, es algo muy, muy bueno para bailar, ¿no? Entonces, hay muchas palabras de origen africano. En los sones, en los nombres de los sones, Wasanga, Chiquitsiri, eh, Sacamambú, ¿no? etc. La influencia africana sí es muy fuerte. I interviewed Nora with los cojolites a long time ago. And, um, and it was also kind of this question about bailadoras. And um, a lot of, you know, I think she had an been to the United States and she was in the United States as a bailadora, you know? And I asked her how she felt when she danced. And she said, um, me siento más mujer. And the way she said it was like, like power, you know? Like if somebody would say, um, we instead of saying huevos, así como, you know, it was like mujer was in the place of, of, of Of, yeah, that, you know, and so I feel like a, a woman, but a woman that is empowered and a woman whose, whose womanness, whatever that means to whoever, you know, is a sign of strength and is a, a sign of beauty, but your own kind of, um, you know, like that Navajo saying, like, walk in beauty. It's like, walk as yourself, but it was, it's like dance in beauty. It's like, walk, dance as, as who you are, as yourself present yourself as you are, and that's beauty. Que tal y yo empezamos como esta, este diálogo con, con la comunidad jarocha en un intercambio, y entonces se organizó literalmente este, un intercambio con, con amigos en, en Veracruz, ¿no? Y nos quedamos en su casa, fuimos a Jaltipan, estuvimos en, en diferentes fandangos, en fiestas, este, y tuvimos unas pláticas muy importantes donde no era, era bien interesante aprender cómo una comunidad percibía a la otra comunidad, ¿no? Y nos reímos que, y con, con el mismo Patricio Hidalgo nos reímos, ¿no? Que en, en algún momento dijo que los, que los chicanos éramos huérfanos de cultura, ¿no? Porque íbamos como a aprender. Y, y entonces percepciones, no, pero pues ya, no, ya no lo diría, ¿no? Pero esas conversaciones que eran muy importantes para aprender este, de la historia que teníamos en, en común, pero también las historias que teníamos este, que eran muy diferentes, ¿no? O, otro chiste era que, no, que decían, llegué a, a Jaltipan y dice, ahí viene otro, otros de los quetzales. Yo decía, ¿cómo los quetzales? Pensaban que los chicanos nos decíamos quetzales, porque como eran todos quetzales. Yo decía, no, yo no soy de la banda Quetzal, yo soy... No, no, había una señora de, de, de Trancho que es, es este, esposa de Tereso, se llama Rodolfina, dice... Sí. A ver, estoy confundida, sí. ¿cuál es la diferencia entre los Quetzales y los Chicanos? <risa> This whole encuentro really is uh, one of those moments where you're realizing, uh oh, something's happening. Okay, and I've seen them throughout, you know, the last you know, 20 years of my life. I've seen those moments happen. It's the same thing, like, like the, the moment we we were sitting in a, in a room in Jalapa, and the whole son 
like all the, the big dogs of the son movement are there, you know, in one room. And then there's like 15 Chicanos and Chicanos and we're kind of, I'm just kind of looking around and I'm like, oh fuck, you know, this is happening. Same thing, we're in the middle of the forest in the Zapatista community, walking down the hill and there's like a thousand Zapatistas lined up greeting us saying, you know, que vivan los Chicanos or whatever. And they're all dressed, you know, in their traditional indigenous clothes and their ski masks and shit. And you're just kind of like, shit, you know, what have we done? You know, and, and it's like I said, these moments happen over and over. And I feel like this was one of these, those moments where I'm like, okay, you know, this is turning into something else now. And people are, are starting to, uh, to regroup and, and talk. And I know that Andres and Cesar are going to go back and they're going to be like, you know, and also to be part of kind of this project that Quetzal and Marta, two compañeros that I think we, we dreamt of this together in, in this weird way. You know, when Son Jarocho and, and the Fandango, we were making these connections to the Fandangos and to the Jaranero movement, and we were dealing with these questions together and um, trying to figure out all these kind of different problematics that were coming up. I see the, the project here is really, um, I feel like it's part, partly my project, you know? And so feeling like that extension of something that you dreamt with two people that you love very much and then seeing kind of this larger, larger you know, project actually come to life is amazing. And I'm gonna try pretty soon because after this weekend, I'm very inspired just by me learning and if you want to learn, then we need to keep also doing the chain of, of knowledge, passing the knowledge, you know, but not just the court. What I was hoping would have happened happened, and that is, you know, this really uh, engaged, epic dialogue about, you know, what the work that other people, everyone is doing, and what we want to see happen, and so. I think that happened, you know, uh, to, a, to a large degree. I mean, of course, there could have, it could have gone on for hours, you know, and it did go on for a couple hours, but it could have gone on for more. <clears throat> but uh, I think this was a great introduction and a way to sort of, uh, uh, um, sort of uh, peak the interest of all the parties involved to, uh, to continue this dialogue. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Thank you for inviting the other people and for gathering these nice and beautiful fandangos in Seattle. Huh. <laughs>